Pre-calc, chapter 2, section 3. So we're going to long divide polynomials, synthetic divide, and then we're going to use remainder theorem to find our zeros. So let's quickly review some basic algebra on finding zeros from factor form. So for here, if they're already factored, we just set each of the products equal to zero to find our solutions of 7 and negative 4. We've already done that the past few days. So we should be pretty good at that by now. Uh, taking it and going the other direction, if you're given the zeros, we should be able to write the factors from that. So if a zero of negative three it comes from the factor of x plus three, and a zero of five would come from the factor of x minus five. And the last uh, quick example here is just realizing how many zeros we have from a given polynomial. So in this, we look at the degree of it, we have the degree three, so we should have three zeros. Uh, they may not be distinct, so they could be the same value. Um, they may be imaginary, but we have three zeros to make that polynomial. So dividing. Some of our terminology for dividing we should recall from our basic math. When we are dividing, we have the dividend, the divisor, the quotient, and the remainder. Uh, and so writing it as the product, students have a hard time seeing that, but we can put that back into the division here. So. If we take our f of x divided by d of x, that's taking our dividend and dividing it by the divisor. What we get is our quotient, the result here, plus the remainder over the divisor, what we're dividing by. So this terminology, we should have some idea what those mean. Uh, when our remainder is zero, then our divisor is a factor, it's a solution. And so this example here, x squared minus 1, we want to to divide by x plus 1. There's two ways for dividing, uh, synthetic division and long division. We are going to synthetic divide whenever we're dividing by a binomial uh, with a coefficient of 1. And so we may need to change your factor to have a coefficient of 1, but we can, div we can synthetic divide whenever we have this binomial. To synthetic divide, we take the coefficients of the 1x squared plus 0x minus 1. So you have to include all the terms from the biggest degree to the constant and take these coefficients and constant and we're going to list them out in a row. We kind of build this board. On the outside we always put the 0, not the factor, the 0. So negative 1 would be the 0 from x plus 1. In the process we drop the 1 then we're going to multiply negative 1 times 1 and place it below the next column, which is negative 1. We're going to add those two values together. So 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. And we repeat that process. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And if we add those together, we get 0. This last number here is always our remainder. So our remainder is 0, which is what we're hoping for. And then it, working backwards, this next number would be the constant, next one would be an x, and then it keeps building by degree. Another way to think about it is we're doing a, we're taking x squared and we're dividing it by x. So an x squared divided by x leaves us with a degree of x. So our result here would be x minus 1. And so we took x squared and we divided it, x squared minus 1 divided by x plus 1, we just found our result to be x minus 1, which we should know already. Because if you take x squared minus 1 and you factor it, factors 2, x plus 1, and x minus 1. And so synthetic division is one way of helping us find factors or finding other uh, polynomials that multiply together to equal a polynomial. The more difficult one is long division. And so we need to recall to long divide numbers first. Uh, so if I'm just taking uh, 12 into 2,345, I'll just make that up. And so to long divide numbers, 12, you see how many 12s go into 23? And only one 12 goes in there. So we do 1 times 12, write it below the 23, and subtract. Notice how for synthetic division we are adding, here we're subtracting. So when we subtract, we get 11 drop the next number 4 and we figure out 12 times what would be 114 so that's going to be 9 9 times 12 is 108 we subtract those we get 6 drop the last number 5 and 12 goes into 65 5 times 
5 times 12 is 60 and we have a 5 left over which is our remainder so we can write that 195 and 5 twelfths so that's long dividing with numbers just integers if we do that same problem again well, let's do it with our polynomial so we place the polynomial below the division symbol and make sure we have all of our terms from our biggest degree to a smallest degree and we're dividing it by this trinomial so the process is looking at the first term of this trinomial. Let's take x squared and figure out what do you multiply x squared by to get 6x to the fourth. So we need to multiply it by 6 and multiply it by x squared. Uh, I'm going to put that above my x squared. So you kind of see I made a column of x squared. I'm try to stay organized here and have columns by degree. Uh, I'm going to multiply this entire trinomial by that 6x squared. I'm going to write it below the dividend. And so 6x to the fourth plus 6x cubed minus 6x squared and I'm going to subtract these two polynomials and so I'm going to get 0 for that first term that's what you want when I have to get rid of this first term and then I'm a negative x cubed minus a positive 6x cubed so be careful of your signs here this is going to be a negative 7x cubed and then a negative x squared minus a negative 6x squared so really minus negative we're really adding there we're going to get a positive 5x squared. Drop the next term. So we drop the 9x. And then I repeat that process. x squared times what is negative 7x cubed. And it's going to be negative 7x. And then I'm going to multiply this trinomial by the negative 7x and get negative 7x cubed minus 7x squared plus 7x. And then we're going to subtract these two polynomials again. So the first one's 0, the second one we're going to get 12x squared, and the last term we get 9 minus 7, 2x. We have one more term to drop here, then negative 3. And so one last time, x squared times a 12 would be 12x squared, so I need to multiply it by 12. Multiply the trinomial, I get 12x squared plus 12x minus 12. Subtract these, and then so we're going to get a negative 10x, and a negative 3 minus a negative 12, so it's really negative 3 plus 12, or positive 9. So this right here is our remainder. It's, I know that because the degree of it is smaller than what we're dividing by, and so we say plus our remainder, which is negative 10x plus 9 all over our divisor x squared plus x minus 1. So our quotient we get would be this entire thing and the remainder. So not very pretty, but the only way to divide when we're dividing by uh, non-binomials is going to be long division. So a remainder theorem. Um, typically use synthetic division when possible here is if a polynomial f of x is divided by that binomial the remainder you get um, is actually the value of f at the k value. So example here, if we're taking this polynomial and we want to divide it by this binomial, I use synthetic division. So I have 1, negative 5, negative 7, and 4. So I'm going to real quick drop the 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So negative 35. This is our remainder. It's not 0, so x minus 3 does not go evenly into that polynomial. But the remainder theorem is stating this, that if I'm trying to find f of 3, if I want to put 3 into that function and find what the y value would be, it's the same as this remainder. We actually get negative 35. So synthetic division is kind of a, a nice way of finding or evaluating for different values of x. The remainder is the y value at that x value. So the last piece of content here is the uh, using the remainder. So whenever we have a factor, x minus k is a factor of f x, it will be a factor when the remainder is zero. When if you uh, plug that k value in, you get zero out. You get a zero root solution. All those words mean the same thing. 
So if the remainder is zero, we can write as a point. K zero is the point, which is also called the x-intercept. It's kind of a huge concept there that whenever you have a graph, and you sketch it, where it crosses the x-axis, these are the zeros, roots, or solutions. So these numbers, we can actually divide by those factors or zeros to find uh, a smaller polynomial factor of the original problem. The rational zero test, I'm going to ignore this because we don't do this anymore because we usually use calculators. So for this problem, the polynomial, we want to find all the zeros or factors of it. We want to graph it. And um, actually, before I graph this one, I first notice that they all have an x in it. So I might factor out an x right away. It gives me a smaller degree. Let's drop all the degrees by 1. Now I have that constant. So really what I'm going to try to find the factors of is the left over portion, this right here. And if I if I sketch that, and I would actually punch in the calculator to figure out where it crosses, I know it's going to cross. It's going to look like this. And I know some of these zeros. I know it's going to cross here at 1. It's going to cross here at negative 1. Uh, and so we can actually stop there. But um, and I can find the other ones using our synthetic division. So we want to make sure that these are zeros, even though they look like they cross, we can show that mathematically by using synthetic division. So I take my coefficients and constants of the polynomial, and I synthetic divide by 1. So. I get a remainder of 0, which means that 1 is a 0 and x minus 1 would be a factor. So we think these other zeros are negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. Um, we can double synthetic divide. So I take what I just found in my, my zeros here, this polynomial that's left over here, and I can synthetic divide that by another one. So I'm going to just choose negative 2. So I drop the 1, multiply by negative 2, add, multiply, get 4, add, get 1, multiply by negative 2, I find 0. So that's my remainder again. So I know that 1 and negative 2 are zeros. For sure, 1 and negative 2 are zeros. What's left over here, again, 0 is the remainder. 0 is the remainder. 1 is the constant. 1 is the constant. Negative 2 is x. 1 would be x squared. So I get uh, x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now, I still have two more zeros here. So let's factor that. And that factors to x minus 1 and x minus 1. So we end up not having 2 as a 0. So we have x minus 1, x minus 1, uh, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, and then if you look at the oi, negative 1 and negative 1 added together is negative 2. So if I solve each of those, I find x equals 1, x equals 1. So our zeros we found are 1, 1, negative 2, 1, and then that first one I found right here, there's actually a 0 right here of 0. So those are the five zeros. The problem asks for the factors. So the factor would be the x from the original one, and then take each of these um, and write them as factors. So negative 2 would be a factor of x plus 2. And then we have 1, 1, and 1 that occurs three times. So that would be x minus 1 to the third power. So this would be factored form of this polynomial. I'm going to have you try one more for your homework problem. So right here, um, I would first kind of give you a hint. You could divide by a value to make the numbers smaller. That might make it a little easier when you're doing the synthetic division. But plug this in a calculator, try to find the zeros. And then synthetic divide to try to find all the zeros. So for here, I want you to find all zeros. So you want to use the calculator to find zeros. Then I want you to synthetic divide. And we want to synthetic divide to show that there are zeros and to find the rest of the zeros. So I'll take this as your video problem. Uh, video problem. And do the best you can. We'll talk about tomorrow. Have a good night.